Welcome to the grand opening of the Lillian Jones Apartments. I'm Jim French, I'm president of the French Development Company, and at this time I'd like to ask Pastor Michael Guy to step forward and provide us the invocation. Good afternoon. As you heard, we're, I am Father Michael Guy, pastor of St. Philip's Lutheran Church, where Mrs. Jones is a member and has been a member, and I can't not say the number of years because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but St. Philip's is here, and if I could ask them to stand quickly. We are here to support all the work that you've done, Madam Mayor and Councilman. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you with great praise and thanksgiving that you have given us the ability to share gifts, and especially the gift of shelter, which we all need that you give us so continuously. As we celebrate Ms. Lillian Jones, who has worked tirelessly in the community for this same reason, and now we dedicate this building in her honor, we thank you and we ask that you would give us the grace and the strength to continue to do the work and share the gifts that you've given us. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Guy. I'd like to welcome and acknowledge our city, state, and federal partners. I know Charlie's here from, uh, from HUD, the local office. Um, and Carol Payne possibly might stop by. Um, I'd like to welcome our elected officials, our lenders, all of our development team members, the leadership of the Johnston Square Community Association, I know you all are out there too, the family of and Miss Lillian Jones herself, for whom this building is named. And last but not least, a special welcome for the new residents of Lillian Jones Apartments. This is really about you. Welcome to you all, and a big hand for you all. I hope everyone can stick around. We've got uh, Baltimore's best barbecue, Big Bad Wolf from Harford Road out in, the, uh, out in the courtyard on the patio. So after we're done here, let's, we've got some food, and you can take it in the community room and uh, and have a good time, hopefully, and get to meet some of your new neighbors, um, get to meet some members from the church. Um, we'll also be providing tours for those of, the, those of you who'd like to look at some units. Um, Karen Waters and Melissa Heffler are here. If you want to see them, they'd be happy to give you a tour, I'm sure. Just for the purpose of providing some background, in 2009, those of you may remember, this was primarily an overgrown lot with about 13, there were 13 vacant houses that were along Greenmount Avenue. Baltimore Housing issued an RFP for developers who were interested in redeveloping these two square blocks. And it was at that time that I approached F.T. Burden, uh, the CEO and executive director of Empire Homes and said, you know, why don't we respond to this? So we responded to the RFP as a co-development partnership, and we were awarded the property later that year. We wouldn't be here today if it were not for the full cooperation that we received from so many of the various people in the various city agencies that we worked with. Um, the approval process for this site uh, was astounding. I, I think every city review process there, there was um, was involved here. We had street closings and alley closings and zoning and you know utility relocation and, and it, was a very, it was a very challenging site. And after we were lucky enough to be awarded the property there was still some, still some acquisition and land assembly work that had to be done. So later on in the program, I really would like to acknowledge those city persons that participated in that whole process and helped us. The first speaker I'd like to invite to the podium requires no introduction. Her Vacance to Values program is fast becoming a national model, and she has distinguished herself by being the first mayor in Baltimore's recent past 
to align city agency resources in a strategic direction to promote growth. It wasn't long ago that we were talking about planned shrinkage, downsizing, and how best to manage decline in the population, but no more. Madam Mayor, I'll have you know that we have some new residents here who have come from outside the city. We have, I know at least one person who's come from as far away as Prince George's County to live here. But we have also have many new families who have moved in, who are from this neighborhood, who've jumped at the chance to move into better housing. So at this time, I'd like to invite my good friend, and yes, Baltimore's son, it is okay for the mayor to have good friends. Please, please step forward and... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I have to start by repeating what I said before and thanking the, the congregants at St. Philip's for praying away the, the rain. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I can't stand a gloomy day. And we needed a little bit of sunshine, and we needed to be able to have a rain-free event for Ms. Jones. So, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I want to thank Jim for building such a beautiful, beautiful building. I rode by here over the weekend, and I just looked. I was so excited I, because I knew this event was coming up. It's thrilling to be here remembering about a year and a half ago that uh, many of us were here together at the groundbreaking. It's like night and day. Night and day. I remember at the time thinking about how projects like this really work to help Baltimore grow. They also allow us to keep the residents that we have in our city. And, you know, sometimes people get it twisted when I talk about growing Baltimore. They say all you care about is moving, you know, getting new people into the city. I'm not against new people moving into the city, but what I am what I'd say all the time is a growth strategy is a retention strategy because for far too long people would move out of the city, move out of the city, and we can't grow our city if we're allowing that to happen. So this project helps us retain some of our good seniors in our communities, and I'm so proud uh, every time I see a project that helps us with our retention of our Baltimore City residents. I want to thank all of the new residents for coming, for, uh, for being here, the ones that are from Baltimore, the ones that are outside of Baltimore. I love you all the same, and thank you very much for being here. I want to thank my, my uh, partners in government. I'll start with the, the state and Delegate Glenn. Thank you for, for being here, uh, supporting this great community. This is the second time I was with the uh, council president today. Uh, we started off the, the morning over in McCullough Homes, and many of you probably remember if you uh, drive up and down McCullough, you see those uh, the statues. It's a little girl reading a book and a little boy, I think he's playing a harmonica. And um, through the diligence and the commitment of the residents there, we were able to uh, work in partnership and get those statues uh, restored and the council president was right there. I said, you know, he's, we're equal opportunity. We start on the west side, we finish on the east side. We got it all covered. Got it all covered today. And um, I want to thank Councilman uh, Carl Stokes for being here as well. And I want to thank all of our, our state partners. I know I say it in jest when I, when I see Secretary Skinner I say thank you for all you've done and thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Uh, but I say it in jest, but because of the commitment and the track record of uh, his agency, it's not a joke because I know there's more support coming. We have such a strong uh, partnership with uh, the O'Malley Brown administration and uh, Secretary Skinner. I know uh, that this, you know, that just as I see him here today at the Lillian Jones apartment, I'm going to see him, I'm sure, in a few weeks somewhere else at, a par at, a, at an event where the state once again is partnering with us uh, to help me grow Baltimore. So I want to thank you as well and all the other partners who help make this happen. It's such <laughs> thank you. It's such a great feeling to be able to cut a ribbon on a finished project. And I want to thank Ms. Lillian Jones for her steadfast commitment to Johnson Square. Thank you very much. It is a, a, you know, there's nothing like, I don't know the feeling, so I can't tell you, but I, I'm sure it, it's a special feeling to have your name uh, on a building, especially one as beautiful as this. 
So thank you so much. I think we can all learn a lot from Ms. Lillian's steady hand in helping change this community. And I also want to thank Commissioner Graziano. I want to thank Mary Ross, FT, FT. I want to thank you very much as well for all of your work and Michael Millman for their, uh, their commitment to this project. Again, uh, as I say, there's nothing that we can do, there's very little, I should say, that we can do alone. And there's, when we work in partnership, there's nothing we can't do. So I wanna thank all of the partners for making this uh, a great day uh, in East Baltimore. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This morning, uh, we learned that uh, President Young would be able to join us. Um, okay. You're, you don't want to, would you like to say a few words, President Young? We'd love to have you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm so excited to be here to see this uh, wonderful, wonderful project riding up uh, Greenmount and looking at the vacants. I remember I used to call uh, the housing department and say, hey, what y'all gonna do with those? Uh, they wanted to do a skate park. I said, no skate park. Um, and I'm just happy to be here to celebrate with Miss Lillian Jones. And I asked her, I said, which one of these apartments is going to be yours? She said she don't know. So I'm hoping that you all have one in store for her as well. So I just want to thank all of the partners, thank the mayor for her leadership, Councilman Carl Stokes, and everybody that was involved in this wonderful, wonderful project. It's so beautiful just riding by here, looking at that, and knowing that it's going to have a lot of wonderful people living in here. So I just, again, want to just thank all the partners. And um, I always tell Ray, the mayor talks to him as well, but I always tell him, bring more and more and more money, and we need to do more and more of these projects. Thank you. Thank you, President Young. The next speaker is someone who works tirelessly in his East Baltimore district. From the very beginning, he's been a supporter of our project. Early on, I came to the councilman when I knew we had a tight time frame to get a street closing ordinance through before the council's summer recess. And both he and President Young offered to help in any way that they could, and we were successful in getting that done. He has earned a lot of respect and admiration over the years because he's never afraid to put his principles first in the best interest of his community. At this time, I'd like to ask Councilman Carl Stokes of the 12th District to come to the podium. Thank you, Jim. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. What a great day. The Lord continues to bless us. You know, thank you. I, Jack Young, my, my president, um, has asked me to keep my remarks brief. Uh, something about a barbecue happening uh, in the back there. And uh, so, that, I'll take care of my president. Because I tell you the good thing about uh, following Jack Young. I, I get to cut ribbons. Uh, Jack has been uh, serving this district so well before becoming president that when I came in, thank you, go ahead, Jack Young. Jack has served this district so well uh, that when I've come in, uh, I just get to go around and cut ribbons. Like the... Uh, 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 City Arts across the street. And I got to tell you, uh, F.T. and Jim and uh, uh, Cho Ben, uh, I, I try to be politically correct, but you know, this is a much nicer architectural <laughs> <laughs> speaking. I am so proud of the, of the job uh, that's been done here. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, affordable housing is, is not done. Uh, well, you know what I'm saying, and I'm staying away from it, but this is just a wonderful, wonderful uh, rendering of a great, great place for folks to live. And I'm most proud today uh, that I grew up um, knowing Lillian Jones. I'm, I'm most proud that I grew up uh, having uh, known her and what it meant uh, to be community. Uh, to be neighbor, uh, learning, organizing, uh, and all of the things that are, uh, have, have made this neighborhood so strong. I know there was a period uh, when we had some rough patches, but uh, because of her and Mary Ross and, and a few others uh, who, who have done so well in, in teaching us so early on, uh, we are, uh, again, uh, a community with strength. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of this. Thank everyone um, who has been thanked and, and, and who have not been thanked thus far, but just thank you all. And Paul, uh, the Department of Housing in Baltimore City, uh, we thank you also. So a lot of good stuff has been happening in this community and 
and uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Stokes. One of the things that I need to point out is that projects like this are typically done with a tool that's called the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. And it's our Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development that awards those credits to developers across the state annually on a competitive basis. This, app, this project's applications for credits was submitted in 2010, and it, it missed the scoring cutoff just by a few points. Is that right, Pat? Yeah. So there's something called the Secretary's Reserve Allocation. I, I guess we're allowed to talk about this. Um, the, the next speaker that our... The, but our project was worthy enough to earn credits from that pool. You never know exactly you know, what happens behind the scenes that, that made it happen, but I know very well that this project would not have happened if it weren't for the mayor, Commissioner Graziano, and this next speaker, uh, Secretary Skinner. Be before I call him to the podium, I'd like to acknowledge Pat Sylvester and Frank Coakley. It was Frank who I called uh, early on in, uh, to say, how are we doing with that, uh, that application you know, for Secretary's Reserve? Are we going to get it? And Frank said, don't worry. Yeah. So. <laughs> so at this time, I'd like to call Secretary Skinner. Thank you, Jim, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it was about a year ago I had the privilege of um, being here to attend the uh, groundbreaking for the Lillian Jones apartment. And at that time, I made the promise to come back for the rib ribbon cutting. So I'm really delighted to be able to be here this afternoon when, as we cut the ribbons for this beautiful uh, apartment building that you see behind me. Uh, clearly, as already has been said, this project could not have been possible without the strong support for many, many partners uh, who work to make these deals possible. Of course, uh, we have a strong partnership with uh, Baltimore City, as the mayor uh, mentioned, uh, uh, companies like the French Company and, and Empire Homes, uh, and all the other partners, particularly the, the funding partners who help to put these deals uh, together. <clears throat> so I also want to thank uh, the HUD staff. I think they've already been recognized, but I see uh, HUD staff in the audience. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my staff at the Department of Housing and Community Development for the great work that they do. I get to stand up here and, and, uh, and talk to you all, but they are the ones who really make things happen. So uh, let's give a hand to my staff at the ACD. <laughs> and of course, I'd like to thank all of the uh, uh, people of the uh, Johnson Square uh, community uh, who've been waiting a long time for this. And, and uh, particularly, I want to thank you, uh, Ms. Lillian Jones, uh, for all the great work that you've done in this community uh, to the point where you have a building named after you. Um, so, but with this groundbreaking, we're say, celebrating more than just a building, but we're really celebrating the continued revitalization of, of this community. Uh, so I also want to bring greetings from Governor Martin O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown. Uh, neither one could be here today, but they are certainly here in spirit, uh, and they have continued to support uh, the work that we do at the Department of Housing and Community Development, not only through our housing programs, but all of our, our revitalization programs like community legacy and neighborhood uh, business uh, works. Uh, and we've been able to use uh, many, many resources, uh, state and federal tax credits and other financing resources uh, to build or help finance over 13,000 uh, housing units, affordable rental housing units uh, in the state since the beginning of the O'Malley-Brown administration. Uh, and that not only created the housing units, but also, of course, created jobs and put um, close to $2 billion into the state's economy uh, by uh, creating jobs for, for money for wages, money to buy goods and services, uh, and so forth. So again, uh, in Baltimore City, uh, we've, we've been very active in Baltimore City. During the O'Malley-Brown administration, we financed about 44 projects here in the city, adding over 4,000 units of affordable rental housing and putting over $500 million into the city's uh, economy. So this... Uh, 
So, so this uh, a complex is really a great example of how we're working together, working with the state, local governments, with the federal government at HUD, as well as private develop developers and neighborhood uh, residents to continue to revitalize communities, uh, to create jobs and create new homes for our, our residents. So uh, in closing, I just want to thank everyone uh, for coming. Thank you for inviting me to be with you today. Uh, and I look forward to coming back to Baltimore City again and again and again to cut many more ribbons. Uh, and we at the state are just uh, strongly support uh, the mayor's goal of adding 10,000 households to the city's population. And uh, Madam Mayor, we are with you 100%, and we're going to do everything that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Skinner. Earlier, I talked about the role that city agencies played in making this project happen. It was not just the land assembly, but there was an overall coordinating role that someone needed to play. And Baltimore Housing played that role from the very beginning of the pre-development process by dedicating a staff person to shepherd the project through the various agency reviews. But it was much more than that. Baltimore Housing is led by someone who saw the potential of this site and this neighborhood and saw to it that other complementary activity was going on at the same time. So if you look around, there's, been a, there's a lot of construction activity going on in this neighborhood. Shortly after uh, we opened our doors, miraculously, you know, Hoffman Street got paved. You know, the junkyard got relocated and moved. The, the warehouse building got demolished. Um, so, it really is important to have a partner like that that will work to make sure that, that the environment with which, within which you're building is being improved. And at this time, I'd like to invite Commissioner Paul Graziano up to say a few words. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. And as I was sitting here in my chair looking out, it's just, it's an incredible view out here. You know, it's just, and it's going to get better and better. Um, this is, uh, uh, was probably the epicenter of, of blight in this area uh, for so many years, but now it is a place where, you know, uh, uh, energy and, and investment and, and, and new opportunities are just springing up all over the place. Um, this is a very, very substantial achievement. This is a very, very important uh, corner here. It was a challenging project, as you acknowledged, and, and, and uh, uh, some people probably don't even know that you're standing in f on top of the uh, Amtrak line here, uh, and you couldn't build on that site. So very creative design about how do you set the building back and use this for parking and create green space. And uh, you know what? Uh, this is, uh, people don't realize how beautiful this uh, Greenmount Cemetery is. You sit here and look at those. Uh, historic uh, monuments and all the greenery. Uh, you look here at the City Arts uh, Building right up across the street, and I'm very proud to say that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we awarded the 1700 block of Greenmount Avenue, two blocks up from City Arts, to the same developers. They will be doing a City Arts too. Uh, on that site, and we'll be back to the state, I'm sure, uh, <laughs> Secretary, uh, for that project as well as we move up and down this Greenmount Avenue corridor. Uh, you look over here and you see that beautiful orange uh, water tower there for the new Baltimore Design School that sat, uh, 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 an empty warehouse that sat there for years until our code enforcement guys were able to go in there and, and really uh, beat up on somebody who was not helping the neighborhood and get it in the hands of people who would. Uh, there's so much going on around here, I just can't begin to, uh, to, to, to describe it all. Right behind us, so important, getting those houses on uh, Preston Street, seven, eight, nine hundred 900 block of Preston, renovated. Mikasa has been a tremendous a partner here in the neighborhood. I want to acknowledge a few people, and then I'll sit down because it is hot, but I get really excited as I look out here, and uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's only going to get better and better. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, Jim, I would like to thank you and F.T. Burden, uh, the development team. You guys have just been wonderful uh, and creative and, and inspired here. So thank you very much. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you for your leadership. Uh, this, this is really where it all comes together, vacant, vacants to value in all its dimensions, the new construction, the infill, the demolition, 
the creation of green space, uh, the rehabs, the uh, just everything coming together, and this is what we can do around the city. Uh, and so I'm very excited. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Council President Young for his support. Uh, he and I drove around this neighborhood a few years ago when it was still his district, and we talked about what can we do here. And uh, I asked him to have a little bit of faith uh, that we had a plan and that was going to move forward. And now, uh, uh, Mr. President, I, 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 I'm happy to be able to say, here it is. And we're here, and I'm very happy. Um, Councilman Stokes, uh, you've inherited this district, and uh, you've, you've got a very exciting district here. There's all kinds of wonderful things going on with all kinds of wonderful people. I want to thank uh, Delegate Glenn. The state support has been critical. Obviously, uh, uh, Secretary Skinner, uh, he and I, I don't know how many of these events we've been to together, but it never gets boring. Uh, it's always exciting. And we're very, very happy to be here uh, with the, uh, the, the support of the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the secretary and his entire team. Uh, HUD is a critical actor as well. And I did see Charlie Holm out there. I don't know if he's still out. Yes, he is. Uh, he's, a, he's a good man uh, who is uh, the keeper of the flame. Uh, I, I must say some people uh, like to hammer away at these programs. These are examples of why we need to keep doing these programs and why HUD needs to have that federal role. I want to thank my team, uh, 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 Deputy Commissioners uh, Peter Engel and uh, Julie Day, I know is out there, my Chief of Staff, uh, Kim Washington, uh, and our entire team has been wonderful. I, I don't know if Bill Bergui is out there. He usually is hanging around the corner here somewhere, but he, with his creative uh, abilities to assemble sites, Angie Ennis, Jim Majors, I think was a little under the weather, but um, so, so important here. Uh, so, so many people, Mary Ross, uh, obviously the Johnson Square CDC, uh, and of course, uh, Lillian Jones herself. What would, we, what would we do without Lillian? What would we call this place? I mean, it's got to be your, it's got to be your place. Uh, and so, thank you for believing uh, in, in all of us. I want to thank the Bank of America. I know uh, Dave uh, Milman is here, uh, and there are just so many other people. I'm sure I've left out many, many, but um, I, I just get outright, uh, uh, you know, uh, overwhelmed by all the investment, all the energy here. Uh, it is a beautiful spot, and it is great to be here in, in East Baltimore in the transformation of this wonderful neighborhood. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you for all your support. Projects like this need the private sector, and tools like the Low Income Housing Tax Credit wouldn't work if we didn't have investors seeking those credits and lenders who are able to provide the critical construction loans that we need to bridge to permanent financing. This well-known institution has made its mark in Baltimore, not just along the Green Mountain Corridor, but throughout the city with its commitment to affordable housing. And at this time, I would like to introduce Dave Millman from the Bank of America. Dave is the Maryland State President of the Baltimore Market. Maryland and Baltimore Market, is that right, Dave? Something like that? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Ms. Jones. And as I look out at that orange water tower, I'm reminded that at 11.15 p.m. last night, the Orioles swept the Yankees. In <laughs> but I digress. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to be with you today as we celebrate the grand opening of the Lillian Jones Apartments at Bank of America. Our purpose is simple, and that's to make lives better by connecting with our communities, our customers, and clients, and providing the financial solutions that they need. As we know, this project is providing over is providing 74 new affordable one, two, and three bedroom apartments to the community. And the project broke, broke ground on April 17, 2012, and in 15 short months, we've helped to continue the transformation of this historic neighborhood. Together with the City Arts Apartments, the Mikasa Homes, the Baltimore Design School, and the Baltimore Montessori Public Charter School, we're making our city affordable and desirable. I would like to thank our mayor and the city for providing over $1.3 million to this project. And Frank Coakley, you seem to have 
kicked in somehow here, I, with, magically. And the French development company, the developer and the property manager. These investments with $14.5 million in low-income housing tax credits purchased by Bank of America made this project happen. I'd also like to thank the Bank of America team for the financing that was put together here. And I'd like to, I'd like to recognize Joyce Moskovitz, who's sitting right there. If you would just stand up briefly, Joyce. Their dedication, our team's dedication to providing affordable housing in Baltimore and around the country helps us all succeed together. Thank you for this opportunity. We look forward to continuing the work and of making dreams come true in our magnificent city. And life is better when we're connected. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave, and you beat me to it. I was going to provide a special thanks to Joyce Moskowitz, who has been with us since the very beginning here, and now she's moved on to a new, new role at the bank. So we're going to miss you, but we'll, we'll still find you, Joyce. Also, a special thank you and acknowledgement. Um, the uh, tax credit investor, uh, Rick Slagle, representing Raymond James Tax Credit Funds, is also out there somewhere. Uh, Rick, thank you, too. Our next speaker leads a very successful Baltimore-based nonprofit organization called Heirs Empire Homes, who's been providing housing to special needs populations for over a decade. And we feel, feel very fortunate, fortunate to have this organization as our co-development partner. FT's organization is a developer in its own right, led by Lisa Stachuro, who I think many of us know, who's worked for many nonprofits and has uh, quite a reputation throughout our town and was a great coup for FT to, uh, to, to have here uh, to entice into his organization. However, um, in addition to their development role, Empire Homes is also working with us to provide supportive services to the families that will be uh, moving into this building and who will be living in this new community. Um, FT, at this time, if you could please step forward. Thank you, Jim. I'm really happy to be here today on behalf of this project. Um, you know, as Jim said, when we first kind of took a look at this site and uh, began talking about the possibilities of making application for it, uh, I, I really had no idea that it would re be able to come together as quickly as it did. And so, you know, on behalf of the entire development team, uh, from Southway who did an amazing job in building it and staying on schedule and within budget and an amazing design by Chobin Holbeck, the leadership of the city, um, particularly the mayor and the commissioner with the Vacants to Values program, uh, the, all of the, the state officials, and, and especially under the leadership of Secretary Skinner um, in terms of obtaining the credits the support of, of HUD as always. We're really thankful for all of those who have played an amazing part in helping us to do it. But really, um, in, in addition to those, from an organization standpoint, you know, I also wanted to recognize you know, the leadership of our board of directors. Um, I see Carla Neely from my board here today, and I want to thank them for being here and for having the vision to support a project like this. And, and recognizing that this was going to be an opportunity and present a platform for us to grow as an organization. Uh, we really appreciate the, the being able to do projects like this because it expands our capacity to be able to do more and be able to, to reach more and serve more. Uh, I think that uh, in addition to that, as, as, as Jim pointed out, uh, this really you know, was a huge, I, I get to stand up here today, but the person who should really be standing here talking about this project is Lisa Datura. She is our executive vice president of development and really just ran this project, you know, with very, very little um, help from me. So, you know, I just kind of get to stand here. So I really, really want to thank her for all of her hard work. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy to have swooped her up. <laughs> Um, in addition to that, I'd like to say that but now that the building is built and we know that it's going to be sound and you'll get to see not only how beautiful and, and, and all that, but it's really about the people and ensuring that they are able to succeed and thrive. And the way that we ensure that that happens is through the provision of the various support services. So we're also happy to be working with, uh, with French Development and Towner Management to provide those support services. <laughs> 
our staff member, Eugenia Wu Fort, is going to be here um, assisting the families. We're happy to be able to, uh, through this partnership, to be able to help in providing more housing for non-elderly people with disabilities, you know, to be able to put them in, in facilities as beautiful as this. The types of services that will be provided to those that live here, and these are in, focused on the entire family, include things like case management and workforce development and parenting activities and things associated with getting the kids engaged. And so we're really, really very happy to be here. We hope that this project um, continues to act as a catalyst for community and economic development, but most importantly, human development. And again, we're really happy to be a part of it and look forward to doing more. Thank you very much. Thanks, FT. It's great to have you as a partner. One of the things that has been most fun about working on this project, I think, is the time that I've spent meeting with community residents because you, you learn so much about neighborhood history and you learn about, you know, the, there's so many stories behind everything. And the Johnson Square Community Association, led by Walter Jones and Mary Ross, they welcomed us from the very beginning into this neighborhood. And we asked what we should name the project. They didn't hesitate a moment to suggest that this project should be named uh, after Lillian Jones. And I think it's only fitting that this next speaker provide us with a little more insight about who Mrs. Jones is and, and what, we, what she represents to this community. Uh, Ms. Ross or Mr. Jones, would you like to come forward? Uh, first of all, I want to look out there and thank everyone that I see that worked so hard along with us throughout this project. And um, I want to recognize briefly our board members, Mrs. Sterling, you can just, and Jaretha Fordham, Barbara, and Ms. Early, our secretary, uh, Robert Holmes, Ade, I don't want to get in the last name, but they're just a few of the, <laughs> They're just a few of the people that I want to acknowledge that uh, have worked tireless, tirelessly with us. But I don't want to hold this up any longer, but very briefly, I think that Walter Jones has been our president, vice president, and a few other things for almost 40 years now in the Johnston Square community. And I could not think of a better tribute than to ask that this building be named after his mother. Because, and I think, I felt that it would be something that he could appreciate for how he has selfishly given up himself. And, uh, and, um, I think that our journey with uh, Lillian Jones go back to the early 70s. And someone asked me, what did she do that was so spectacular? I said, nothing. She was a consistent supporter of the Johnson Square community and our efforts to try to maintain and stabilize it and improve it. And so therefore, we are certainly appreciative of everyone that has turned out this evening and thank you all very much. I don't know all the partners, but I do thank you. And most of all, we have worked consistently just about every week with Mr. French and I think we want to give him a special thank you. Okay. And we thank you very much again for coming out. Uh, wait a minute. I got to get you the money. First, I want to give honor to our Father in heaven, uh, his son Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, 
I'll be very brief. Mary come to me, and Mary is the kind of person don't like to take full credit for anything. But she came to me and asked me. It was solely her idea to get my mother's name on this building. And I wanted, and my hat is off to uh, Mr. French, because Mr. French worked very diligent into uh, uh, seeing that everything worked out fine. But I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize one young beautiful lady that is our mayor, <laughs> Stephanie Rollins Blake. <laughs> She is a very, very hard working, and, and believe me, what she can do, if she can do it, she'll let you know she can't do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm very gratified, and uh, I'm very gratified, and I speak without hesitation about our mayor. I want to thank uh, our commissioner, Raziana, he stayed right on the horse. <laughs> he might have rode it without a saddle, but he stayed on it. Couldn't afford the saddle. <laughs> I want to thank uh, uh, our councilman, uh, Carl Stokes, and the big guy, the big guy. I want to thank our president of the city council, Mr. Jack Young. Now, we get to the part that everybody's been, been talking about. I give you my mother, I give the names to you. I want to say Mrs. Countability, Mrs. Credibility, Mrs. Responsibility, Integrity, and Character. She got a lot of all that. Oh I, I give you my mother, Lillian Jones. Wow. Thank you so much. Before I ask Reverend Guy to step forward for his words of benediction, I just want to thank a couple of others. Our general contractor, Southway Builders, I see Paul Littman, uh, Willie Moore, Sean Scott, Colin Helgeson, Jim Millette, who's left us, uh, Wayne Noseworthy, there's just a great team of folks that we had from Southway. And as you proceed up this uh, Green Mount Carter, you'll see their construction signs all along the way. So they're, um, they're doing great work uh, to rebuild Baltimore. Our design team from Cho Ben Holbach, David Benz here, Diane Cho, MJ Wojewitzki, who worked with us on this project, and I can pronounce her name now, now that we're <laughs> at the end. Um, Dana Johnson's here from TRF, who provided critical pre-development financing for this project early on through the Baltimore Integration Partnership and all the city and state agency folks that worked to make this happen, particularly Jennifer Melke, who's moved on, who was our project manager for, the, uh, for Baltimore Housing, Bill Bergie, Angie Ennis, Peter Engel, Jim Majors, Mike Braverman, I see Julie out there, um, uh, folks over in Department of Public Works, Paul Barnes, who's since retired, and then the late uh, Bill Beatty. Um, and then finally, I want to acknowledge the work of uh, leasing the building that's gotten off to a great start there are 21 uh, families out of the 74 that, is, that have moved in since may the first and i want to give a special shout out to the team at towner management led by Gardy fraker who just celebrated his 30 30th year with the french companies and last but not least i want to thank jay french jay for your leadership guidance and mentorship and for challenging all of us at French and Towner to take on a challenge such as this one. So thank you to Jay. Thanks to Diane.